blew the spirit of life into us one more time. And for this, we want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so good and so kind to sinners like us. Yes. We, we didn't deserve it, Lord, but you said, uh, my child, arise. And our bed was not our cooling pot. And we were able to stand on our own two feet. We were able to get ourselves ready. And we pressed our way here. And for that, Lord, is only a blessing from you. Thank you. That's the biggest blessing we can all have, Lord. To wake up and see another day, Lord. Because we, we can concern ourselves, Lord, about all types of things, but you blessed us yes, yes. with another day. And on this day, Lord, this last first Sunday in 2023, we want to say thank you for carrying us this far. Yes. It wasn't us, Lord, but it was you. Yes. Yes. every path, took us through it all. And on every leaving sign, you was right there. Yes. So Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit into this place. Yes. We need you, Lord, to come and let it tarry with us for a little while. Yes. But Lord, not just today, every day, Lord, until we come back and renew our spiritual yes. love with you. Yes. We thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the visitation. We thank you, Lord, for all those who are here. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for your promise of Jesus. Yes. And most of all, Lord, we give all thanks to you. You are the crown of our Lord. And let every word that hath breath praise your name. Yes. So we give you the blessings and the praise and the glory. Let's union Baptist Church. All the churches in the yes. South
this day I want to give you a title for this. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? We all like to think that we know what's going on, don't we? Do you find out? You don't. But what is very difficult sometimes to admit that we don't have the answers or even the insights or the knowledge to apply from one situation to another. Trouble comes, and it doesn't come by once or twice. It rolls around. Yeah. Difficult situations Continue. don't don't just stop at the door. They roll through the door. And 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 we try to apply what we know and what we think. And yet and still we can get it wrong. Oh, y'all, come on with me. Maybe this is what's behind that uh, fascination that we have with how the world's going to end. You know, it always just boggles me. It, it tells us that, that it won't be a flood. It tells us it, it'll be fire. And, and I say to myself, well, well, are we going to blow ourselves up? Well, how will the world end? Yes, yes. How will we destroy it? The end of this world. Maybe we have a hard time with the fact that Jesus, come on with me, said so clearly, no one knows the day or the hour. If I'm truthful to myself, yeah. I really don't like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> and let me, let me tell you what. Come on, come on with me. Yeah. Because the, the sin in me, the temptation in me, if I knew when the world was going to end, I might try to be bad all the time. All the time. Me too. Be, because I could, right up to that point, I could say, Lord, save me. Come on, y'all know how we are. Yeah. You, you would do what you wanted to do because you knew the hour and when it was coming and you were, well, you know I got four more days. Well. Hey, did he just say, I got three more days. And then maybe around the second day, you know, oh, well, you know. <laughs> I better be get it right now. What were you thinking? The pastor is talking about. I, I want to know this much. I really want to understand God's ways. Yes. But then I read this scripture. Come on with me. Come on yes. with me. And he says, "My thoughts, <laughs> not just your thoughts." What? But, but Lord, I, I want to think like you. But your thoughts are not my thoughts. Man, that's right. That's right. That's right. But as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than my ways. And his thoughts higher than my thoughts. That's Isaiah 55. One more time. Go right there. Eight and nine. You see, my thoughts stop here. But God's thoughts are translucent all over. They, they, they transcend everything. There's so much energy in his thoughts that if I even tried to think like he did, my brain would explode. Because he thinks on just not little old me. He got Come on with me. He got everybody, everything in his hands. Yeah. Ooh. Yes, the whole yes. world is in his hands. Let, let, let me break it down for you. I remember 
some of my first times trying to be a preacher. I was at First Hope Well. Y'all go right down, aren't you? You go right down and see it. Big church. I was the youth pastor there for many years, drove the van, did all kind of stuff. Reverend Robert Johnson, we called him Bob. Great man. And I would always talk to him. And sometimes in my thinking, it really was difficult to talk to him. Come on now. Be because his thoughts were not my thoughts. <laughs> He, he would tell me, boy, if you don't listen, I'm going to sit you down. <laughs> and you didn't want to get sit down because at 8 o'clock every Sunday you had a rotation. And, and in your rotation, you, you got good. You got to be able to preach. And you got a little coin. <laughs> so, so the best thing you would do is just shut up. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> and listen to what Rob had to say. Because, because at that time I was a jokester too. Uh -huh. I, I, you all know how I am. I, I would always joke. And he said, boy, you always got a joke on this sermon. Why are you telling jokes? <laughs> I, I don't know, Pastor. It's just in me. I can't help it. He said, but that last one was funny. <laughs> but, 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 learning from a man of God who said under P.F. Johnson, who, who's right down the street from there. That's right. I got to push him around and learn from him. He said, boy, you better learn. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Put the finger up and tell you. I never realized that I was talking to pillars. That's right. Yeah. And greatness. Yeah, that. And, 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 and the, the little nugget head in me didn't know that those were nuggets of wisdom that I still have today. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. What was I thinking? Lord have mercy. Then, then from his mouth, Reverend Bob said to me, I want you to go into the other sanctuary. And I want you to pray for this man. I, I don't know this man. He just came to the church. And he's going blind. And I looked around and said, you got all the people. I said, you're a pastor. He stood up. He said, what did I just tell you? I said, yes, sir. I thought in my stinking thinking. You're the pastor. Aren't you supposed to go pray for him? Mm -hmm. Come on now. The Reverend Johnson says, well then, aren't you going to go pray for him? And I tell you, yes, sir, I'm going, I'm going. And as I'm walking, I hadn't been really praying for anybody. I'm a youth pastor. I drive a bus. I joke with everybody. I'm not, I'm not thinking about how God's presence can be in my prayers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. What were you thinking? I wasn't. Then, then, then I, I go to pray for him. I go. I said, sir, how are you? He looked up at me and says, oh, you going to pray for me? I said, yes, sir. I got up and, and went in there and put my hand on his hand and prayed. Saying the first thing that came into my head. I wasn't no prayer warrior. I wasn't, uh, what, you know, they can call down the, the heaven and the Lord. No, I wasn't. <laughs> what happened? And, and I, 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 didn't, I didn't expect it either. So after a few minutes of uh, 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 praying and, 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 and then, little, you know, a little, little praise and went in, and I got up and I said, I hope you are being blessed. Uh, and you be blessed, sir. He says, thank you. That was wonderful. We stayed in there. I, I didn't expect nothing to happen. And guess what? It didn't. But, but a few weeks later, that man came to church. Eyes healed. And praising God. He told the pastor, he said, that boy, that boy got a gift. Pastor, I don't know if you know he got a gift. <laughs> but, but look at me, I can see. I, I, I don't know what called me to this church. And, and Reverend Johnson sat me down. He said, boy, I knew it was something in you. You got a gift for healing people. Even, even 
know you don't know how to pray. Keep on praying. And I, I, I understood something. For the first time in my life, I realized that I had underrated, undervalued, and underestimated the power of God. Come on now. Yes, sir. What he will do. For the first time in my life, I realized that the miracles of Jesus were not just for 2,000 years ago. Come on now. Preach. Preach. They are not just stories in the Bible. Here I was faced with a miracle that had happened couldn't get away from it. No matter what I did, I was the prayer warrior now for the Reverend Johnson. It'll tell you, even by down there. If you remember when I got ordained, who he sent all the preachers up here. When I got to, to be the pastor here, he sent four preachers here, if y'all remember. And I, and I realized that it was because I listened. But what was I thinking? Yeah, Lord, have mercy. I messed up. Let me tell you something. Jesus, in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 and 27, he says, brothers and sisters, think of what you were and you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He took me a long time, however, to realize how far this truth extended. It extends as long as you extend your love to him. Oh, yeah, come on. Come on with me. Come on with me. We got a story. On top of a towering mountain nestled between what was a beautiful village. There on that mountain lived a wise old man named Vicar. Sounds a good name to me. The, the renowned man was known for his ability to answer the deepest questions. He, he could decipher the language of nature. He, he was a very wise old man. And he loved to help people understand the ways of life. Well, well as time and chance, come on with me, haven't the villagers encountered a fierce storm? It ravaged their crops and their homes. After that devastating storm, they were reeling back. And they, they, they said, we better go up to the mountain and talk to the old man in the car. We, we, we're messed up. We, we, we're lost. And they made their way up the mountain. Those who could. And as they approached the car, the old man, many were sad and confused about what had happened to their crops, to their homes. And they pleaded to, for an explanation. Carl looked at him. He had them sit. And then he sat. And with that serene beauty of what you call the peace within that surpasses all understanding. The old man became the tale of a beautiful tiny bird that refused to seek shelter despite heavy clouds. And, and, and the, 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 the torrential rain and all, he didn't just stop. He kept on going. The bird continued chirping happily, seemingly oblivious to what was to come. The impending danger, but still as the storm unleashed its fury, the bird remained unscathed, flying effortlessly above the storm. The villagers, astonished, asked the car, the old man on the mountain, what was that bird thinking? He 
should have hid. He, he should have not tried to, to fight through the storm. He should have just given up and, and went somewhere and let the storm pass by. The car answers, the bird was thinking it does what comes naturally to fly. It flew. It believed it could soar over the impending danger. And it believes in itself. Help us, Lord. And it's the same thing for you and I. What were you thinking on many occasions when you did what you did? Y'all know some of the things we've done. We, we've been dangerous to ourselves. Not only to ourselves, to others. Yes. Yes. But there's a silver lining, the car tells them. For if you look, the ground is still there. Thank God. God's earth is still there. Yes. No one died. Thank you, Lord. You can build again. You can, build you can soar as high as you want to soar. Maybe this time build with rocks and stone instead of sticks. Come on. Maybe this time plant when you should plant and not when you shouldn't. Yes. In other words, soar and fly and do what you need to do like God tells you to do because when you got God on your side, yes. you can start again. Come on, my family and friends, in our lives we often encounter moments where we echo the villagers' question to the card of old man and bird. What were you thinking? We face decisions. Do I go left? Do I go right? Large and small. Do I, do I retire? Do I sell? Do, do I laugh at this? Do I smile or do I cry? Come on now. Where our choices seem confused or divided, we find ourselves questioning our own judgment over and over again. Why did I do that? What was I thinking? Been there? Isaiah reminds us of God's unfathomable thoughts and we, we, we try to transcend with God is the, the level of our depth of understanding, but we still mess up, don't we? We still fall short. We still have uh, so much to learn. So much to learn. Oh, oh come yes, on. Sir. I'm going to give you these points and I'm going to leave you alone. Yes, sir. You better not dismiss the significance of your choices, good or bad. Don't dismiss it. We, we have the opportunity to learn and be so in, indestructible almost with what we can do now. That's right. This world is, is changing right before our eyes. But yet, what are we doing to make it better? That's the question. Oh. Point number one. What were you thinking? Reflection and thinking. First thing you better do is examine yourself. Examine yourself to show yourself approved. A workman that need him not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to read the Bible. You got to imagine yourself in the Bible, looking at the Bible, using it, and thinking just like God is telling so you don't fall on your face over and over again. Haven't you getting tired of doing the same old thing over and over again and beating yourself up when you keep doing it? Yes. What were you thinking? Lord have mercy. Listen, many times our actions stem from fleeting emotions. Oh, he did that? You better do this to him. <clears throat> hmm. How about societal pressures. Well, you better get married. You need to get married. You know you shouldn't marry that person. You know you shouldn't be in a relationship with that person. You know that God didn't tell you to marry or be with that person. 
But what were you thinking? Oh, come on, somebody. Huh? Yeah. Societal pressures. Huh? Jealousy. Yeah. We, 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 we have a, a tendency, when, when temptation is, is hitting us, and sin is hitting us, we get upset when somebody else is doing better than we are, when we are praising the Lord and doing what we need to do. But God is saying, don't you worry, what I got for you is for you. Number two, embrace God's guidance. We face life's difficulties, don't we? Can you surrender to God's guidance? Come on, come on, let me tell you something. We all know the times we embraced our own thoughts, doing harm to ourselves and others. You know how we used to be, smoke too much, drink too much, how'd you get here, how'd you do that? <laughs> You know what we do, what we want to do. Oh, we mess up. We do harm to ourselves and others. But when you embrace God, it can bring you peace above all understanding. You got to cultivate a prayerful spirit in everything you do. You got to allow God's wisdom to illuminate your path. Because we are full of uncertainty. Sometimes you ever get to a point and say, I don't know what I should do. Yes. You get stuck right there. And that's when God is tapping you on the back. He says, hey, can, look, can you put some prayer on this, man? Come on. I got you. I'm telling you, you need to do it this way. But then you're looking at this way. You say, well, I, this way is the easy way. This is, this is the easy path. And God say, no. -uh. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts <laughs> are not your thoughts. Oh, y'all, come on with me. Yes. And number three, you got to transform and grow. Yes. Huh? Yes. When you embrace the transformative power of aligning your thoughts with God, sure. you align your thoughts with the energy, with the love, with the compassion, yes. with the thoughts of the blessings, blessings of God. God. Yes. You align yourself with everything else that ain't right. TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You align yourself with folks you know you shouldn't align yourself with. You do all kinds of things. You get high, you drink, you steal, you cheat. You align with everything else. How about trying to align with Align with the Lord. And as I get ready to leave you, what were you thinking? Can you serve as a, a big time catalyst for spiritual growth? Can you embrace that wonderful invitation that says seek to align with God? Are you going to climb up the mountain? And when you climb up the mountain to talk to the old man, he's going to sit there. And the first thing he's going to do is point to the cross. He said, you came here to talk to me, but I'll point you to the cross. You see, you thinking is stinking. <laughs> you got stinking thinking. <laughs> you need to think like the Lord and say, yeah. Jesus Christ, the embodiment of God's wisdom, the thought of love, he serves us, he guides us through all life's complications. When you put your mind on him, you'll see that he'll lead you, he'll guide you, he'll correct you, he'll put you in the right direction. You see, because he came down for the two generations. My God, yes it is. Oh, when you get down and you think about it, what did Jesus do? How was his thinking? I tell you how it was in his thinking. He healed the sick. Did he heal the sick? They say everyone they brought to him, he healed them. How about it? He gave a sight to 
When you regulate your mind with God, he can keep you. He can. Come on, y'all know the scripture. Huh? Uh, keep you regulated with perfect peace. Huh? I, what are you thinking? I'm thinking about Jesus. <laughs> I'm thinking about my Lord and Savior. I'm thinking about the man who came and died on the cross for me. I'm thinking about him through all my troubles. I'm thinking about him through all my problems. I'm thinking about him through all my difficulties. I'm thinking about him when I'm crying. I'm thinking about him when I'm sad. I'm thinking about him when I'm sick. I'm thinking about him when I'm down. I'm thinking about him when I'm hurt. I'm thinking about him when relationships break. I'm thinking about him all day. I'm thinking about him at work. I'm thinking about him when I'm at the back.
God and one another. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. What is the great bond of our union with God and each other. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love. What are our great privileges and duties in this, our own church? To strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, audiences, discipline, and doctrine. What vows do we gladly make? stewards of that which God has instructed to us. To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout all nations. For the sake of our homes and our loved ones, what gracious task do we humbly assume? We will also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to educate religiously our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. For the sake of the unsaved, for whom our Savior died, to what manner of life and conversation are we solemnly and sincerely led? To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagement, exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all talent, backbite, and excessive anger to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. Since one is our master, even Christ, and all we are brethren, by what fraternal ministry are we to strengthen each other and adorn the teachings of our Lord and Savior? We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to seek it without delay. Let us all say, humbly confessing our past sins, we pray for grace and strength to keep these our holy vows for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. held up the wine and he blessed it and he said this blood represents the new testament till I come again yes. and every time you do it you do it in remembrance of me and we do drink in remembrance of Jesus Amen. Amen. and we go out singing a hymn and praising God for all he's done <laughs>